Well, hey there, Facebook lovelies. Hello there, Insta lovelies. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate, and that is because I advocate on brilliant, or for brilliant design divas, design lovers like you, to stop the ugly room from happening, to stop the unhappy result from happening, and to make sure we are empowering you with great strategies to get into the driver's seat and make beautiful things happen at your home so that you can live your best life, feel fabulous in your skin. And every week at 4 p.m. Eastern, we like to come out here, talk to you, stop what we're doing at our luxury design company, and I love to teach you a lesson on something and take your questions about the lesson or about a project that you're working on that pertains to that lesson. We've got some exciting things happening here. First, I gotta tell you, we are launching our Window Boss course in three weeks. Yes, we are. We are launching it to the world. We actually had a group of 100 students go through it. They loved it. And people have been asking, saying, oh my gosh, I missed it. So we're bringing it back in three weeks. It is going to open up on October the 16th. And in honor of that, I'll be doing a brand new free workshop on window treatments. And I wanted to give you even more free information. So if you're on our mailing list, you are part of a great little free workshop series that I've been putting out weekly. Something else will be hitting your mailbox now. If you missed it, get onto our list. And I am going to be doing a different series here on our Facebook Lives. This is part of a three-part Facebook Live series on window treatments. Yay. Why? Why are window treatments such a big deal, first of all? Well, if you spent any time with me before, you know that window treatments surrounding that focal point, surrounding all that glass in your room, they are one of the most massive influencers in any room. And I don't care what your design style is. I don't care if you're transitional, if you're modern, if you're traditional, if you're boho, if you're glam, if you're farmhouse, if you're farmhouse glam, if you're rustic, if you're rustic glam, yada, 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 bip, bip, bip. No matter your style, your window treatments have a massive effect in your room. To include if you choose not to do window treatments, if you're uber modern and trying to do something very minimalist. So let's assume you do want to do something on your window treatments. Window treatment costs are one of the most mm, stressful parts of design. And selecting the right window treatments when you're working on your own home um, is really stressful. And I have to tell you, you can't decide that a window treatment professional is going to get it right for you because long before I was a trained and practiced and now happily award-winning interior designer running my own company, I started out as a design DIY lover like you. I was working on my own home and I was hiring professional designers sometimes. I hired professional window treatment people sometimes. Sometimes I tried to do ready-mades. No matter what I was doing, I was a stress ball and I never quite got it right. My window treatments, when they were done ready-made, they always looked anemic on the window. They never looked like the Pinterest pictures. When I worked in semi with semi-custom professionals or professional designers, I wasn't necessarily getting the results I liked either. Proportion wasn't always right. There are a lot of things that were going wrong. So my lesson in telling you this is not to bash professionals. I love professionals. I am one myself. But you need to be a really savvy consumer of design. As soon as you spend one little penny, one little dime, one little nickel on your window treatments or in your home, right? But you need to be a really savvy window treatment customer. It doesn't matter if you're doing custom semi-custom, or ready-mades. So I would love to hear from you. Hang on, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Hang on, I need a drink. Hold the phone. This is not vodka. Oh, I should be using my Design Advocate mug. I'll do that next week. Anyway, um, just got them. They're new. Um, it doesn't matter if you're ready-made, semi-custom, or custom. It doesn't matter what you spend, my lovely. It matters what you do with what you spend. So there's a lot of strategy you need to understand around your window treatments to make the perfect choice within the perfect budget for your particular design style in your particular room. And then you add in all the confusion points like I have different kinds of windows in the same room or different kinds of windows and doors on the same wall or things are uneven, uneven height windows, uneven height doors, yada, yada, bip, bip, bip. It gets really, really confounding. So I'd love to know from you, when you look at all of the window treatment stresses and we just narrow it down to the budget piece on window treatments, what is your biggest concern, fear, anxiety, nail biter, 
aspirin taking, martini stirring moment to calm yourself down when it comes to the cost issues with window treatments. What frustrates you? What really gets you? And I'd, I'd love to hear from you on that. And while you're typing that in, Insta, feel free to type that in. Facebook lovelies, feel free, feel free to type that in. While you're doing that, I'm going to tell you about a couple of things to think about that will help you with window treatment budget stress. First, you have to make sure, as I said, I'm getting hearts and flowers on that one. So first, you have to make sure that you understand what you are selecting and why. It's not just about the kinds of treatments. It's what kind of window situations do you have, right? What type of window and door situations do you have? What kind of architectural limitations do you have? Then it's knowing what do different treatment types do in different designs? What does your window treatment do in your room design? So there are a lot of different pieces to plug in. So you have to get educated on that. So I want to invite you to my free workshop that I'm doing in, in, uh, in October. We'll give you some, some dates on that soon. Um, so you want to make sure you're educating yourself as much as possible so you know what you should be focusing on and what you should not be focusing on. And based upon the questions, a lot of you design diva lovelies will send to me, I know, that's a good question, but you're asking the wrong question at the wrong time. You're focusing on the wrong thing. The problem is not how to, I'm going to make this up, how to treat your bay window. The problem is you missed three other steps that you needed to consider before you even got to how to pick out the right treatment for your bay window, okay? So it's about educating yourself so you know what you should be thinking about, what a, what a professional designer thinks about to make sure that she is getting fantastically perfect choices done on those window treatments. That helps save money because you're going to get rid of those costly mistakes, whether it's ready-made, semi, or custom. But the other thing to know is that there are certain treatments you can select that are going to give you some budget relief. So again, I don't know your design mojo. I don't know what style you're loving, what your design jam is right now. Katie, I have to stop saying jam. I've said that like three times today, haven't I? Keep saying Keeps, it. Katie, Katie said, keep saying it. Jam, jam, jam. Anyway. See, I don't know what your design fingerprint is in design, so I'm just going to throw out, though, to you three of the most economical things, okay? So, if you are working in or, or purchasing in the ready-made realm, certainly going into, as well as semi-custom or custom, and you're doing panels, certainly going into a sheer panel is going to be less costly than any of the other panels you can select. Why? because there's no lining, and in the case of custom, no inner lining. And there's a lot less labor. It's not just about all the fabrics that go into all those layers, linings and interlinings, but it's all the, also the labor to assemble all that. So if you select a shear instead that will work in your XYZ room, why not go for it? And it doesn't necessarily have to be like a bridal veil kind of shear. It might be something that's a very, um, a, a fairly sheer woven that might be perfect in your farmhouse vibe that you're doing, you know, in your, in your condo, right? So it's about wanting to get a certain look and asking yourself, hey, can I do that with the sheer, provided that it's the right fabric, not a silk voile or a veil kind of fabric. That's not the only thing that it, that is sheer. You can do a sheer in a very sheer cotton woven or a sheer nylon woven, okay? So they don't have to be these like super feminine, frilly, froofy, okay? So going with a sheer product that doesn't have any linings to it could, might be a perfect, perfect solution for you for a lower cost option. Then something else you can do is reduce the amount of treatment you're putting on a window, right? You can go for a shade instead of panels. Let's face it. You go with a the shade, there's no hardware. Do you know the hardware costs really start to add up? The rod, the rings, the brackets, the finials. Do you know what all that is? The brackets hold things onto the wall. The rod is that big long line. Uh, the rings affix. And then also the finials, those are those, those pieces at the end of your, of your rods. So if you go with a blind instead of a set of panels, ready-made or otherwise, Sometimes that can be a much lower cost option for you. And blinds have changed so much. You know, gone is the day where blinds were these very utilitarian looking things. They can still be that. They don't have to be. There's been a lot of process and progress uh, in what blinds can look like. Different types of, they can, they are man-made, 
but they can look like beautiful fabrics, right? So, so, so that might be something for you if you just really want to get your dining room finished and doing a pair of panels at ready-made isn't where you want to be and doing semi-custom or custom isn't where you want to be. You might be able to do with the vibe you've got going on in your dining room. Simple shades might be really perfect for you too. So shears where panels are concerned, shades where, where, where um, something that will give you privacy and light control. Shade is a, a really lower cost option than a panel that traverses. And then the other thing you can think about doing that is lower cost, in terms of staying power, it's gonna, you're going to say, what? What are you telling me this lower cost? It's not the lowest cost, but it is lower cost among treatment options. I'm going to tell you architectural shutters. Yes. Why do I say that? When the economy got really wonky back in 08, 09, the window covering association started to release interesting stats, and they were that architectural the shutters were, were staying. People were optioning those over anything else. Why? Because they got light control, they got privacy control, they got something that had kind of a classic timelessness for many design styles, not all design styles, clearly not, you know, super modern, right? Um, but it, it really worked for a lot of pocketbooks, a lot of wallets. It delivered a lot as window treatments goes, which made it a, a more value-driven selection. Not the lowest cost, but lower cost within the realm. So I want you to know that with shutters, you have something that tends to hold its value in terms of home and home resale. You have something that, like I said, gives you a lot of light control and a lot of privacy control. And it can be fairly, I don't want to say nondescript on a window, but it can be, it just starts to kind of sink more into your architecture. So that might be something that you want to think about as three options I can give you about controlling your cost with window treatments. And then the other thing, too, to help alleviate budget stress, and we talked about this a little bit in a different scenario in one of our window, in one of our Facebook lives, I'd love to encourage you to get rid of this all or nothing mentality. Oh, if I can't do custom treatments in every single room, all is lost, it's going to look lousy. Wrong. You have no idea how many families, individuals, couples do blends. They'll do some ready-mades in a home, some semis, some custom, a blend on the same window of a little bit of custom and a little bit of ready-made. So, so try to loosen up your thinking a little bit to give you some great budget relief. And I definitely want to invite you to check out a great blog post I have put up there for you. It's all about how window treatments can transform a space. And I definitely want to invite you to stay tuned for more announcements about the free workshop that I'll be putting on for two days uh, in October. October, I think 16, 17, is that right? October 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Katie's saying, mm hmm. 16, 17 is called How to Conquer Window Treatment Stress or Confusion. How to Conquer Window Treatment Confusion. And I've got, as I always do in my free workshops, a lot of meaty takeaway and a free gifty or two coming your way as well. So we're going to be doing that to kick off the launch or the full official launch of our Window Boss course, which is all about how to plan and select window treatments like a boss. Okay, so <laughs> let me see what's on these your gorgeous designing mind. So I'm getting lots of hellos and hellos from Florida and Atlanta and Kentucky. Hello, Florida, Atlanta, and Kentucky. Girls, it's great to see you. Um, uh, Elaine is here. She's having, uh, oh, she just had hand surgery. Gosh, Elaine, I'm glad you're here. I hope you're feeling better, babe. Okay, and Sally is telling me she's super excited about this weekend for the Design Diva Conference, and it's Sally's birthday present to herself. Hey, that note to self, Sally's birthday <laughs> present to her. <laughs> Sally, I can't wait to hug you and see you in person. In fact, guys, I hope you'll follow us on Instagram. If you're not coming to the conference, totally get it, no problem. Follow us on Instagram, and I'll put up our Instagram handle in a sec, so we can post from the conference and share with you things that are going on. Uh, and Okay, I'm getting a lot of people telling me they're excited to come this weekend. Okay, so now we get into the questions and stress that you're having around, around your design treatment, designing window treatments. What's your budget stress? So Celeste is saying, will it make the room look better? That's a budget stress. If you screw it up, 
you have a really costly mistake on your hands, unless the average home has 16 windows in it, yipes. So that's a lot to screw up and a lot of money to waste, so I'd get it Celeste. Jill is saying, do I need to put curtains over wood blinds? So that's a stress. Do I, should I do it? Should I not do it? Um, Jen McCann is saying she wants to make sure that everything flows. That's a budget stress. You screw that up and you've pretty much botched. You botch your window treatments. You will botch your room. You can take the most stunning room in a show house done by the most stunningly talented designer. You screw up those window treatments. Womp, womp. The whole room is going to be awful. I am telling you, we've, we've, see, we've noticed, we've seen this happen. Um, Kathy is saying um, window treatments in open concept is a big budget stress. Yes, it's a budget stress, not only because of all the windows you're trying to treat, right? The costs add up, but also you need to make sure in open concept that you are asking the right questions and answering the right questions so that you are selecting the right treatments. It always comes back to that education. So I totally, totally get it. And it's important too with window treatments and open concept that you don't feel like you're locked into matchy matchy. Mm -mm but that there is a flow. So one of you brilliantly used the word flow, a flow, um, a marriage, a, um, a continuity, right? So that's real important. Um, Paula is saying, what type of window treatments for double front doors, right? It's a stress. It's a, there's a lot. And double front doors, I don't even know what you mean by double front doors. Are those, are those swing doors, but you want to treat them? So I'm guessing that they're, I don't know what you're with double front, what you mean by your double front door. That's actually something I'm going to be teaching in this free workshop. A lot of you brilliant genius design lovers will ask me questions and, and I'm not saying that Paula, you did this, but it just is reminding me, reminding me of something. People will say, you know, Don, I've got a big window or I've got a normal window or I've got a small window or I've got this big picture window. That's my favorite, the big picture window. You are not naming your windows properly. So in this free workshop, I'm gonna be clarifying for you the different treatment types quickly, but because we have so much to cover um, with meaty takeaway. But I'm also gonna be clarifying the different window types that you guys need to know what you're dealing with so you make sure you're spending your money wisely and picking the right treatment. So I hope you'll show up there. Sydney is saying treatments in adjoining rooms. You know, what treatments are, are complementary with one another? Definitely, Sydney totally get that as a budget stress. And uh, Linda is saying she likes the look of Roman shades. Are they practical for light control on a daily basis? I've heard they don't stack well and should be, and I should be concerned about daily raising and lowering of the shades. Linda, that is a complaint that we hear about Romans, that it's the stack. There's a mechanism built in that forces the fabric to, that forces the fabric to stack up into itself, to, to compress into itself. But what you need to know is fabric is heavy. So you have this Roman with a string mechanism sewn into the, the back of it uh, and into all of the lining and if there's interlining as well. And so all of that weight has to stack up and then release down. And they can get a little fussy if you are talking about the, and the wider the, the window becomes, the more impossibly unwieldy, 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 un the more impossible they are <laughs> to actually use well. So Linda, for Romans um, that are going to be lifted and lowered once in a while, I think that's, it's fine. Depends upon the size of the window, not a really wide width. And, um, but if it's a daily thing, you might be better off. This is not a budget, just a, a low budget idea. You, you, you do it motorized and let that handle that weight. So it's working well. Beth is saying she needs help with bay windows. Oh my gosh, Beth, you missed, I guess, last, was that last week? We talked about, we did talk about bay windows. I get that question a lot. A lot of specialty windows confound people. Transoms, eyebrows, um, uh, uh, radiuses, um, sliders. One, one of you a couple of weeks ago cracked me up. You called sliders the devil. That cracked me up. Okay, Jackie is saying... Her budget stress with window treatments is what ready-made treatments um, to what re what ready-made treatments would I recommend for best quality Pottery Barn Ballard design? The weight of the fabric makes a huge difference. Jackie, I'm going to see if I have time to get back to you um, to answer that question. That's that's a great question. Um, Jackie's also asking if Romanian shades are in. Do you mean Austrian shades? 
um, and answer Austrians, believe it or not, are still around. They're not heavily used, but they're still considered an on-trend item. All right, so, and then Jamie is saying, do I have any, any stresses coming in from Instagram? Yeah, Instagram has budget stress questions. Is it okay to hang panels over windows with indoor shutters? Yeah, you screw that up. You just wasted a lot of money. I'm going to answer that question in just a sec. Um, and then Sheila is saying, if you're using shutters in the front of your house, you have to use them in all the windows that face front in the house. Sheila, it depends on where you live. I mean, if you're in a condo community um, or a, a gated community, um, uh, a townhouse community, sometimes they will have very stringent rules about what should be hung in your front windows to include the color of your lining. So I don't know if you're living in that sort of thing, but generally speaking, to shutters at the front of the house, would it look odd if some room, some windows are shuttered and some are not? I, I think it would look strange, so I wouldn't do it as a designer. Okay. Wow, Sydney says that she has a sunroom with more than 10 windows. She hasn't covered them since you built. Do you need to? This is such a good question. Okay, I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna start answering some of these non-specific budget questions because I love you guys and I love teaching you and empowering you. All right, do you need to cover windows? Rooms other than uber modern minimalist rooms, which do look good with uncovered windows, you know, nice steel frame windows, uh, you know, a, a, a Chicago loft with floor to ceiling windows, you know, those are great uncovered. Of course, you have to deal with glare and furniture fading and heat loss and all that other stuff. But yeah, it can look fine. But if you're in a traditional transition, if you're in like just about any other design style and your windows are bare, it can make a home feel, no matter the size of the home, no matter the size of the room, it can make the home and room rooms feel a little echoey and a little empty and a little cold. Now, are there, ex are there, um, are there uh, exceptions to the every rule? Absolutely. I, I don't believe every window does not need to be treated. In fact, some windows should not be treated. But, and even windows within a home where some things are treated, they should be left, they can be left untreated. But in your sunroom, um, I, I could make a case for either. If, if the view is that spectacular and the architecture of your room is that spectacular and you don't really want to cover your window, you could get away with not covering it in a sunroom. I tend to think it adds a lot to the space when you have that other texture. And if, if it's panels, for example, now you're adding these columns of fabric that just lift a ceiling uh, or are creating a rhythm across a room. So I would just wanna make sure that you're leaving the window bare because it's an intentional choice, not because I don't know what to do in here, therefore it's bare. You never want to do default design because that usually is not the best design result. So hopefully that helps you without seeing pictures. I cannot weigh in more specifically. I'm getting more Instagram. No, oh, I'm getting final two questions. All right, so I want to answer the Instagram question. Is it okay to hang panel curtains over indoor shutters? I talked about this last week or the week before, or two weeks before somebody asked me this. Um, technically, you're not supposed to. Technically, it's strange because your, your shutter is opening and now it's opening into a panel. However, desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, I have a wonderful client who just we love working for, and she lives in a home that was built in about the 1910, 1920s uh, area. Beautiful. It's, it's, it's a beautiful um, home with beautiful architecture to it. And she has these bay windows where she does, and because she, her home sits very close to her neighbor's, she does have shutters and also she's on a main road. So her rooms look a little echoey and empty, even though they're beautifully designed by our team. And I've talked to her about one day when budget allows adding some panels through her bay, if in fact, to, or just on the size of her bay in her case, just to frame that bay and to soften up these shutters because shutters are hard. It's more hard surface. So I can make a case for doing both. Technically, you're not supposed to do panels, but I have broken that rule from time to time. So I'm going to say to DGML Max, it's, I'm going to say it's okay on a case-by-case -case basis. I'd love to see pictures of what you're talking about before I approve it. There you go. Hopefully that helps you and I hope I didn't confuse you. And I said I was going to go back to answer a question. Oh, somebody had a question about 
ready-mades. What do I recommend for best quality? Girlfriends, my hiney is burnt. Do you know why my hiney is burnt? Because we recommended a retailer to a client. We wanted to save her money on her lighting. So we said, you know what? This retailer isn't bad for lamps. And in my world, lamps start in the luxury design world, lamps start at about $450. And I knew that wasn't going to work for this client. So I said, I'm going to save you money. Go to this retailer. Well, the retailer so screwed things up. The client is not happy. And who is she unhappy with? Me, for recommending this particular lighting retailer. We had heard good things about them. We don't really use a lot of retailers in lighting. But I made that recommendation. And it screwed up. And so, ouch, my hiney, it's burnt. Okay, I got burnt. Well intentioned as we were. So, when you ask me to tell you who has a better quality product between Pottery Barn or Ballard, I'm going to ask the community to weigh in because I will tell you what, I've never ordered with either of those resources. So, I can't personally speak to that. I can tell you what to look for in a better made, uh, ready made. And I can tell you that. You're right, fabric makes all the difference in the world. So what I want you to think about with your ready-mades, well, hopefully somebody's going to tell us if they like ready, you know, Pottery Barn better than Ballard. When you have a window panel and it is hanging over a window, let's say this is your window, right? And then there's the wall beyond it. Well, if you have a panel hanging to the left of your window and to the right of your window, that, if that panel is not lined and it's hanging over the window, you're going to see a big cutout of light where the light is coming through that panel if it's not lined. And then the panel's going to get dark looking when it's against the wall. So you need to really ask yourself, how deep into the window do I want my panel to cut? Do I need it to be lined and interlined? I will tell you, you know where the fullness of your panels comes from, especially in ready-mades? From the linings and from the cut of fabric, the amount of fabric that is used. So I would compare the width of your fabric panels one to the other. I would ask questions like, are they lined? And I would ask questions like, can I get a fabric swatch so that you can get that swatch at home, hold it in your hands, scrunch it up. Is it gonna wrinkle badly? Does it have good hand? Is it, is it gonna drape well? Is it a stiff fabric that's gonna kick at the edges? meaning that the, the corners uh, of your panels are going to kind of kind of kick up that way. So I want you to look for uh, that manufacturing quality. And I would order one panel of each from each of, these manu each of these catalogers. And I would look at it and say, you know, do I have straight stitching lines? I know we've had um, incidences with uh, clients who've, who've ordered um, ready maze, let's say, for a, 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 you know, a back bedroom or a kid's room. And the stitch line is like, what were they drinking when they stitched this? And it was made very quickly overseas, lower cost um, manufacturing process to land it at a price you guys will like. So I would order two panels if they look fairly identical in terms of, yeah, either one of these fabrics will work in my space. And I would do a quality comparison on them right then and there. And I would also Google, do a Google search, complaints against so-and-so's window panels, complaints against so-and-so's XYZ, whatever it is you're ordering from them, and see if and there are any complaints that come up so you can be a really wise design consumer. Remember I said earlier, educate yourself so you're a wise design consumer. So hopefully that will help you. All right, lovelies, listen, we got to get going. I have a ton more work to do before we wrap out for the day here at the studio. So I'm going to need to wrap it with you now. But I definitely want to encourage you to keep an eye out if you're on our mailing list. Keep an eye out for the wonderful weekly series that I'm sending out now on window treatments, helping you do some, some um, question answering to get you primed and ready to do more in window treatments in your home. Definitely plan to join me for my free workshop. I'm giving away great information and actionable information all as a grand kickoff to our Window Boss course, launching by popular request. We have brought it back and we are relaunching it. And this time you can do it in your own home, on your own schedule. And we've added some great bonuses and yummy, delicious takeaways and extra things to that course as well. So I'm excited about window treatments getting really gorgeous in your home and really gorgeous in your home on any budget with all that we're going to be bringing you over the next couple of weeks. So I'd love to invite you to next week's Facebook Live, which is part of the window treatment series. I'm getting thumbs up on that one. Thank you, Facebook. 
It's all about, uh, it's titled, Why Window Treatments Are a Pain in the Rear End. Why window treatments are a pain in the rear end. We're going to be talking about that next week, and I'll be taking more of your project questions as well. And I want to just invite you to follow us on Instagram if you're not already doing so, especially with our Design Diva Conference coming. And it's Sally's birthday, for heaven's sakes. You know, we'll be doing something on our Insta feed about that. We'll be releasing some pictures from the conference. We're at, oh my God, that's the wrong one. That's my design studio. You could, you could, you could follow us there. No problem. But you're not going to hear about the conference at decorating.genius. At de oh, you're already following us there. At decorating.genius. At decorating.genius to follow us on Instagram, and we'll be doing some lives from the conference and just posting some stories so you can see what's going on there and feel like you're there with us. I will miss you if you're not going to be with us, but I totally get it. I totally understand. And if you are going to be with us, I cannot wait to see you. And I can't wait to see you. And I can't wait to hug you in person. So in the meantime, lovelies, I will see you next week here, Facebook Live, 4 p.m. Eastern, talking about why window treatments are such a pain in the rear end. All right, guys, hugs and kisses to you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.